Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be going over how I think the duel with Obi-Wan and Vader is going to happen. Going to end up, going to end, conclude. So let's get right into it. Obi-Wan at this point is the most broken, shattered version of himself that he will probably ever be. And now that he knows that Anakin Skywalker is alive, he probably has this false sense of hope that he can go and try to change Anakin and turn him to the light side. And we saw that when, when Reva told Obi-Wan that Anakin Skywalker is still alive. Anakin Skywalker is Darth Vader. It almost seemed like, like, of course, he was in shock. It was like all he cared about in the world that Anakin is alive. And it almost feels like he had a second chance in his mind. So for 10 years, he had been probably mulling over the fact that, like, what could I have done differently? How could I have saved Anakin? How could I have prevented all of this in the galaxy? And he probably would, like, wish more than anything to have a second chance with Anakin, to just talk to him. You know, if I had just spoken to Anakin on Mustafar, maybe this could have gone differently. If I wasn't just so angry or stonewalled, not angry, if I wasn't just so stonewalled or so dogmatic in the sense that saying, you know, only a Sith deals in absolutes, which is an absolute in and of itself, then maybe I could have like heard him out or, or, or stopped him from, you know, dying at my hand. I feel like this is going to propel Obi-Wan to try and turn Anakin to the light side. And I feel like he is in no place to fight even Watto, let alone Darth Vader, who has spent the last 10 years only becoming more powerful than Anakin Skywalker was in Revenge of the Sith. Now, mind you, Vader had to spend years relearning everything, right? So in the Brotherhood book by Mike Chen, which is canon, it goes over a lot in detail about how Vader, uh, Anakin's cybernetic arm that was cut from Dooku, there was a, a delay when he would want to move something or do something with it. It was slower than his actual organic flesh, even though it was almost one-to-one, -one, but it was just not quite the same, and it was just a little bit slower. So like when he would do tricks with his lightsaber, he would switch it into his other hand and so on and so forth. Well, Vader's whole body is like that now. So he had to learn everything all over again, not to mention he is taller, his arms are longer, his hands are bigger because they're mechanical, and he had to adjust, and this is Legends, he had to adjust things in his hand because he would sometimes like crush his lightsaber hilt because it was just too powerful. And he had to basically learn all of this stuff. Like if we see in Revenge of the Sith, how he comes off the table, it's because he doesn't know how to walk yet with those freaking robotic legs. He's like, Dooh. he just... He's like a monstrosity, you know, he is literally a science experiment. And for the first time, he's having to learn how to do everything all over again. Everything. Lightsaber wielding, ability to use the force, all that stuff. So for him, it was like becoming a force user all over again. Because he had to just figure everything out from scratch. He had to learn all the different lightsaber fighting styles again. And be accustomed to using his lightsaber. That's why he switched his lightsaber back to his episode 2 one. But just added some modifications and made them a little bit darker. Like the tip darker and changed some colors around. Right? It's not all chrome anymore. If you didn't notice that, his episode 2 lightsaber is the same as his Darth Vader one. His Darth Vader one is just a little bit chunkier. Because his hands are now bigger. Because they're mechanical. So I think when he goes up against Kenobi, he is going to squash him like a little bug. He is going to absolutely demolish, obliterate, destroy, disintegrate Obi-Wan Kenobi. And I think at this lowest point, Obi-Wan will probably have to regroup. Somehow he gets away. He probably will run away. And then in this moment, he'll probably be reached out to by Qui-Gon Jinn. Qui-Gon will be like Mick to Rocky. There'll be a bit of a montage, maybe he's training, meditating, whatever it might be, finds himself again, becomes the Obi-Wan Kenobi that we see in A New Hope, the Alec Guinness version, hopeful, confident, powerful, and then it goes up against Vader again, or the next time we see him go up against Vader, it's in A New Hope. And maybe it's that, you know, that's why they're so, like, apprehensive. Of course, it's because, you know, it was an older time, it was 1977 or 1975 when that was filmed. So, you know, it, it, we can kind of play into the story that they're apprehensive now of each other. Maybe they fight twice in Kenobi, right? We've heard rumors that they will. Maybe the second time Obi-Wan will win then. And maybe that's why Vader is apprehensive. Who knows? I mean, all of this stuff is new canon, obviously. It's not the original George stuff. Um, in the original George stuff, the A New Hope novelization, which of course the movie novelizations are all stamped and approved by George, to my knowledge. Now, that book explained during Vader and Obi-Wan's fight on the Death Star for the first time in episode four, that Obi-Wan was really shocked at just how physically powerful Vader was because he was just this towering robotic figure and he was unbelievably strong. 
physically and in the force. And everyone was like, holy crap, this is insane. He was just like getting completely demolished. So if they want to stick to a bit of continuity there with, you know, what something that George Lucas signed off on or was aware of, they'll have to portray that, that Vader is just this towering, physically superior being, which he is. I mean, there isn't really anybody superior to Vader physically, unless you're like a Wookiee or something like that. But even then, I think Vader is going to absolutely smush Obi-Wan in their duel. I think Obi-Wan is going to come from a place of love and hope and openness that Vader will listen to him and maybe he'll turn to the dark side or he'll turn to the light side. He'll turn back. He'll change his ways, stop all this stuff. And I think Vader just won't even hesitate for a second and he will just unleash a hell f more hot and painful and fiery than Mustafar itself. And I think he's going to rock Obi-Wan's world and wake up Obi-Wan very cruelly and probably wake up Qui-Gon Jinn to speak to Obi-Wan. And I will love to see what Qui-Gon has to say about Anakin. Because in the book, Dark Lord, The Rise of Darth Vader, he says, forget Anakin. Anakin made his own choice and he's uh, in the hands of the Force now. It's up to the will of the Force to decide what to do with him. Which is a pretty crazy thing for Qui-Gon to say. I mean, it's very Qui-Gon to say. But to say that about Anakin, because he was the one who found him, he's the one who vouched for him, said, you know, this is the chosen one, he must be trained. Man, I love this stuff. I love the prequels. I love Star Wars. I love the prequels and originals so freaking much. I could talk about this literally all day long. For, well, I guess that's what I do. Anyways, let me know what you guys think will happen in the Kenobi duel with Vader. Do you think Vader will maybe lose to Obi-Wan? Do you think Obi-Wan will still have the same, you know, it's like riding a bicycle. He'll still have the same abilities pretty quickly on, early on. Do you think he's going to destroy Kenobi? How will Kenobi get away? How is Vader going to let Kenobi get away? Does Kenobi run away? So many questions. Just a little time. Let me know what you guys think. Love hearing your thoughts. Love reading your thoughts and your comments. Thanks for watching today's video. And I'll see you all in the next one. Until then, remember, the Force will be with you. Always.